Hello YouTube and welcome to episode 2 of Samurai Sam's video game finds. Uh, I thought I was going to go on a bit of a drought collecting games for a while and that didn't happen. I got all kinds of good deals and uh, suddenly I have a whole mess of games to show you that I got recently since my last video. So the first thing is an eBay purchase. I got Troubleshooter for Genesis Complete. Uh, but, unfortunately, the hang tab is ripped off, but that's not the end of the world. This is kind of a cool and quirky anime-ish shoot-em-up game. And if I have my information correct, this was actually released in America before Japan, which I find kind of odd, because it's a very much a Japanese kind of anime-ish kind of game, but it's kind of a cool shoot-em-up. So I wanted it for my collection. Now I got it. That's awesome. And uh, the I went to a... Uh, garage sale because of a Craigslist posting and there unfortunately was not as much there as I had hoped there was as it was sort of implied in the listing. I did get a uh, Star Wars Episode Run Racer for N64 which I hear is really good. I also got a controller and a couple of memory cards but if I remember correctly the controller didn't even work which sucks. But I don't even like remember what controller I got. I went to go like look back on what I got that day. I, I noted that I had a controller and I don't even remember what it was. I think it was a PS2 controller and I'm guessing it didn't work. Um, also that day I stopped by an indie game store and I got a couple more games. I got Radiata Stories for PS2, saw it at a good price and had to get it. I also got Sam and Max Season 2 Beyond Time and Space for Wii. I know the Wii versions of these games uh, aren't as good, they aren't the best, they have some technical issues, but I prefer to have physical copies and it was cheap so I couldn't, I can't resist getting them. Uh, then... Next thing I got is probably actually my favorite item from uh, these, these past couple weeks, and it's a uh, Saturn game I bought on eBay for a surprisingly good price compared to what it often goes for. It's Sega Ages, which is uh, a compilation of three classic Sega arcade games, Afterburner 2, Outrun, and Space Harrier. This was actually published in the U.S. by Working Designs, of all people, and it has a nice shiny manual and shiny text on the back, like... Working Designs did for Albert Odyssey, among others, Magic Knight Ray Earth. And uh, it comes with a neat Working Designs promotional items paper where you could, uh, if you bought this, you could order all kinds of different things from Working Designs, and uh, including games and also memorabilia like t-shirts and baseball caps. Pretty cool. Uh, they actually sold uh, Carousel Stars for only $10, I guess, plus shipping. And... Uh, Whoever bought that was really lucky because it's worth more than that now. Uh, must have been trying to clear out stock or something. Uh, then, uh, next thing I got was a package from Japan, I believe. Uh, so I'll show you that stuff next. I got uh, Ganbare Goemon Uchu Kaizoku Akogingu for PS1. And yes, this is the same series as Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. And this is supposedly one of the best games in the series. Uh, it was com It's a common game, and it was kind of cheap, so definitely wanted it for my collection. Now I got it. And the manual is actually backwards. In other words, it reads from right to left. It opens up kind of the, on the wrong... What we think of as the wrong side. Uh, it reads kind of like a manga, I guess, although, it, you know... It's actually not written manga style, but it reads right to left like a manga book does. Most Japanese manuals are normal uh, left to right, like... American manuals, but this one is unique. So yeah, I can't... I'm actually probably going to play this one soon. Also from Japan, I got my very first Japanese Mega Drive game. I got Darwin 4081, which is a shoot 'em up game where your uh, ship kind of transforms depending on which power-ups you get, and I guess that's why they called it Darwin, because it's supposed to be like kind of like Evolution, but it's more like just changing rapidly. Rapid metamorphosis rather than evolution. Kind of like Pokemon. Um, so, uh, I also got from Japan, I also got uh, a game called Rejoice, which is an uh, adventure game, and it hasn't yet been fan translated in, into English, but it's on uh, Aeon Genesis's long to-do list to do, and it supposedly it's a really cool game. It has a nice soundtrack. And it wasn't very expensive, so I had to pick it up. Also got 
Romancing Saga 2 and Romancing Saga 3. I also have the first Romancing Saga for PS2, which got released in English. And because of my own stupidity, this Romancing Saga 2 does not come with the manual. I did not look at the picture closely enough when I bid on the auction. That sucks. At least I didn't pay a lot for it. Uh, and then the last Super Famicom game I got was... Dual Orb 2, which is an RPG with a very good soundtrack in my opinion. Uh, I'm not sure how good it is. The the graphics and the animations are are impressive from what I've seen. I want to try this out sometime. It's been fan translated. Uh, also, I got from eBay a Game Genie so I could play Darwin 4081 on my Genesis. And then later on, I would get another Game Genie, which I'll get to in a little bit. I'll explain uh, how that deal went down. But yeah, now I have two Game Genies. Uh, I wonder if one works better than the other. The first one I got from eBay kind of was hard for me to get it to, to work, so that's part of the reason why I snatched up the other one when I had a chance. Um, but I haven't tested out the other one yet, so I don't know if it's any better. Um, I got a package of three Game Boy games on eBay for $8. I got... Uh, Super Breakout slash Battle Zone and Track Meet, but the reason why I bought this is because of the third game in the package, and that was Tailgater. Uh, this is a uncommon game by Natsume, and it's pretty good supposedly. Uh, it's actually really, really valuable, complete, but the card only, it's not worth very much. I'm kind of surprised I got it with two other games for only eight dollars though, because sometimes it goes for more than ten. So I'm happy to have that. Then, uh, also on eBay, I got Mystery Dungeon Sheer and the Wanderer for DS, which is a very addictive roguelike game. It's a remake of Fushigi no Dungeon 2 for Super Famicom, which I have. Uh, the music, I have to say, is butchered in this one. The music is way better in the original Super Famicom version, but they, uh, changed a lot of other things other than the music in this, and for the most part, the changes, I think, are a little bit better. So, this is still worth getting. Uh, especially, you know, if you want to, uh, actually, like, own the game in English, and, uh, it's portable, and it, the port portability kind of suits this kind of game, since you can kind of save anywhere, and, uh, so I'm really happy to have this, and it's very, very addictive. I'm trying not to play it too much, because it eats away my backlog time, and it's really, really hard to actually beat this game, so it could take me a long time before that ever happens. Um... Then, for about, oh, several days, I didn't get anything. I think for a whole week I didn't buy anything online or anything. And then uh, my friend Adam, who lives in town, messaged me and told me that a guy was looking to sell a bunch of his old retro games, and he was going to have a tag sale tomorrow, uh, which was, that, which was this was Friday evening, and he was going to sell them on a, at a, at a, as a garage sale on a Saturday. And uh, Adam showed me the pictures of what he had, gave me his contact info, so I called him up, I said, hey, can I come by tonight, and I can I give you tips on how much this stuff is worth, and I'd like to buy the stuff that I'm interested in, so I did that, and uh, the guy was, fortunately for me, just looking to kind of unload the stuff onto somebody who would love it, and of course, I fit that description, and uh, I just gave him $30, because uh, what I got was much, worth much more than $30, and I, I said, uh, uh, yeah, this, for the stuff I didn't buy, I told him how much that was worth to give him a tip on, you know, kind of what to sell it for. Um, but um, for $30, I got all this crap. I got five NES games and a bunch of Genesis games. I got Shadow Dancer, The Secret of Shinobi. This is complete. Uh, this is a cool game in the Shinobi series. Uh, it, it was uh, released as part of the Sega Genesis collection for PS2, which I have. But for some reason, it was excluded from the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection. I don't know why. But um, now I have the original release, which I like to have. I got Wiz and Liz, which is missing the manual. I've heard a lot of good things about this game. It has good multiplayer. Um, so that was great to have. Sorry about the telephone there. I got Cosmic Spacehead, which is a game by Codemasters, and uh, this game has a unique box manual and cartridge, as you can see. I think this is sort of maybe an educational game. It's some, it has 
it's actually kind of a mishmash of genres. There's like point and click scenes in it, and there's some action scenes, and uh, it's kind of a blend of different genres. Reviews suggest that this game is just kind of average, but it's sort of intriguing. So, you know, I had an opportunity to get it for just about nothing, so I did. We got Kid Chameleon, missing the manual, sadly, but this is a good platformer game. It's also included in uh, Sega Genesis Collection, Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. So check it out there. I got Green Dog the Beach Surfer Dude, which is, isn't is a great game, but it's kind of a funny game, as you can imagine from the title. This one is complete. That's cool. And probably the uh, game I was most excited to get was Zombies Ate My Neighbors, which sadly is missing the manual, but uh, I'm still really happy to finally have this game. I've gone a long time without owning it, and I played it at a friend's house. Really fun co-op game. Check it out if you've never heard, like, never played it before. Uh, I also got from several NES games. Actually, first I'll show you, I got a couple loose Genesis cards from them. Wait, did I get two or three loose Genesis cards? Let me see. Um, oh, I got a third one. I gotta grab that over here. Hold on a second. Yes, okay, here we go. I got Risk, which is based on the board game. Uh, I've actually like never played Risk. I don't even know how to play it, but, you know, I heard... I looked up the reviews, and apparently this is a pretty good version, so why the heck not? I got uh, Boogerman, which I played a little bit when I was a kid over at my cousin's house, so I'm kind of happy to have this. It's kind of a funny game. And then a game I was really excited to get, Sunset Riders. Uh, this is not as good as the, the Super Nintendo version, but it is different than the Super Nintendo version. Like, they changed some things, so it's worth getting this, even though the Super Nintendo version is better. And I'm really happy about this. I, I like Sunset Riders. I've played it before. I, this is actually the first version that I've ever actually owned. And then, five NES games. I got first a couple of three uh, common cheap ones, but uh, hopefully good ones. Monster in My Pocket. This seems like a pretty decent side scroller action game. It's actually based, I think, on a toy line called Monster in My Pocket, I, if I remember correctly. Uh, low G Man, which as you can imagine is low gravity. Uh, I tried this out a little bit, didn't really seem that impressive when I played it, but I'll, I'm willing to give it a shot. Some people like it. I got uh, Dragon Spirit, which is a pretty cool shoot 'em up game. And then a couple of uncommon games in the lot. I got Widget, which is uh, a game that was made by Atlas, and of course, knowing Atlas. Pretty much everything they released in the U.S. back in the day is uncommon or rare, and this is this is this isn't super valuable, but it's more valuable than the average NES game. So I'm glad to have it. And then the most valuable item I got from that haul was Felix the Cat, which is supposedly a good game for a licensed game anyway, and it's uh, uncommon and worth like I don't know 25, 30 bucks. So that's cool. Also, I got from him a, a Nintendo 64 and PS2. And the PS2 had a game inside it, and that was FIFA 2005, which I'm not, like, really excited about, but at least now I have a standalone soccer game. I actually didn't have one up until now. Uh, I'm not going to show you the PS2 and X64 systems that I got from them as well, as part of the $30 deal, but uh, they're out in the corner somewhere waiting to be used. I have a sibling who likes to play my game sometimes, so it's good to have spare systems so I can hook them up somewhere other than my room. Um... Let's see. Oh, yes. Also, he told me that if nobody buys his Sega CD over the weekend, then I can come and take it for free, which is awesome, because Sega CDs, if they work, are worth a little bit of money. Um, I told him that. I said, if you're going to give it to me, I'll take it, but I'll give you the opportunity to sell it at like 20 30 bucks if you want. And he said, yeah, I'll try and sell it, and if I don't, then you can have it. So uh, hopefully I'll get another Sega CD, but... You know, even if I don't end of the world, I feel good for him. Not the end of the world, I mean. Then the next day, uh, I went tag sailing in a, a t town nearby. Uh, every year they have like a whole series of tag sales. It's kind of a tradition. And uh, there was just a ton of them. And sadly, there weren't that many video games there. Most of it was like old people selling their stuff. But I did get a few items. Uh, the first one I stopped at, I got Sonic 2 Complete. For dirt cheap, uh, 
I actually didn't have the uh, boxer manual for this. Now I have boxes for all the uh, Genesis Sonic games, which is cool. And uh, I also got a... Uh, let's see, what is this called? Versus Fighting Pad for PS3 or PC. Uh, so, it, as you can see, it's kind of uh, designed to emulate the arcade button layout. L1 and R1 are over here instead of on top. These are L2 and R2 on the top. And uh, for PS1 games, this joystick here can serve as an analog D-pad. I'm sorry, it serve as an analog stick or the D-pad. So it is compatible with PS1 games as well. If your PS2 is compatible with PS2 games, that also means you can use, use it for PS2 games, but unfortunately mine is not. So I'll only be using it for PS1 and PS3 games, if ever. Then, uh, I also got several boxed and complete N64 games for, I got, uh, I got four for $15 plus an empty box and manual. I got, uh, Ocarina of Time, Player's Choice Edition. I actually really like this, how it's gold all the way across. I already have a complete Ocarina of Time, the Collector's Edition, in so-so shape. Now I have this version, and I have a cart-only version of the standard release, so I have three different variants of Ocarina of Time for N64. That's not counting what I have for GameCube and 3DS. I got, uh, Extreme G2, which I already had. Oop, it's upside down. Which I, I already had this card only, now I have it complete. Uh, I enjoyed the first Extreme G when I was a kid. I've actually, like, barely played this one at all, but if I like the first one, I like this one too, so it's cool to have it complete. I got 1080 Snowboarding, which I've never owned. This is complete, in great condition. Um, I got Hybrid Heaven, which uh, I've heard a few things about. Um, Reviews for this one are very mixed, but I have to say I was kind of impressed when I first fired this game up at the music and kind of the presentation for an N64 game. I felt it was pretty good, so I'm going to give this one a shot at some point. And then I got an empty box and manual for Mario Golf. And if you watched my last video, you know I just recently got Mario Golf for dirt cheap card only. So that's kind of cool how Mario Golf Complete just kind of fell on my lap out of nowhere. Uh, the lady was actually going to just give this to me for free, if, even if I didn't buy those other four. So I got Mario Golf with the box and manual for, like, literally almost nothing. That's awesome. Uh, then, I think I only have, a, like, uh, five more things to show you. Uh, Rolling Thunder for NES, Tengen Kart. I thought this might actually be worth something, but unfortunately it's not. Uh, I must have been confusing it with some other game. I got it for a dollar. Um, and then I stopped by uh, another indie game store, and I got four PS1 games for a pretty good price compared to what they often go for. I got Mega Man Legends Black Label. It's got a little nick right here, but pretty good con condition. And the, by the way, the discs for all, all four of these games are in spectacular condition. I got Parasite Eve 2. I still need to get the first one. Unfortunately, it came with some sticker residue on the, the box and and even on the manual, which is hard to get off here. That's kind of annoying, but oh well, I can deal with it. And then, finally, the last item I'm going to show you, I got well, the last two items. Breath of Fire 3 and Breath of Fire 4, they were uh, $25 each, plus uh, with my membership card for the store, I got 10% off. And then, of course, tax was at, sales tax was added onto that, so I got them for less than $25 each. And considering what, that they often go for $30 plus, dollars, that is a really good deal. And now I have all five Breath of Fire games, and I'm really, really happy to say that. And I have yet to beat one of them. In fact, I've probably not even spent an hour combined on the Breath of Fire games. That's kind of sad. That will change someday. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything I added to my collection. I If I... Uh, forgot something, it might have been just uh, one or two little accessories. By the way, the second uh, Game GD I got was in that lot of Genesis games I showed you before that I got at the yard sale. You know, the one where I got Risk and Sunset Riders and Boogerman. Uh, my second Game GD came that and that, I felt like. Oh, I just bought this on eBay. But that's alright, I'm not complaining. Uh, even though I just complained. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I got for uh, these past what it was a week and a half, two weeks since my last video. Um, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, comment, subscribe if you want, and uh, I'll see you next time. This is Samurai Sam signing off.